famous cartoonist says things in the morning this is episode 34 that means I've done this 33 other times but I'm here for you today to take a swig with you in the morning swig for an early bird Ray Leonard is here good morning to you mr. Leonard I like your comics. I like what you're doing. I am awake this morning, but I'm still awake. I've been awake. I saw the sun go down, and I saw it come up. Well, I didn't watch it, but it did peer through my windows. It is now light outside. Birds are chirping. People are taking showers, getting ready for Zoom calls, because that's what the world is now. The world is one big Zoom call. That's what we're doing here. We're Zoom, 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 Swig for Zoom calls. A little itch. Haas is here. Oh, yeah, Haas. You're a good man, Haas. Ray, Raymond Leonard, man, it means a lot. Thank you. Oh yeah, man, I like your, uh, I like your superhero solo. It reminds me of what? I, what? It reminds me of, uh, of course, the old Image comics, but it inspires me and inspires other creators, especially when you want to create your own superhero, and everyone tells you. Uh, Nobody wants to do it with you, so you do it yourself. That's what I admire. That's pretty cool. And Scoot's here too. Wow, we're all we're all gathered together. Scoot McMahon's here, everybody. Welcome to famous cartoon that says things in the morning. We're, we're all creating things. Scoot's probably getting ready for work. You might be at work already. I think the world is ahead of me. <laughs> Two sheds is here. It says, "Wow, early art." Um, I'm still late nighting. I'm all nighting art. I'm uh, I didn't wake up early. I woke up yesterday, and I'm still awake. But I did a lot of stuff. I drew a lot of books in the last week and a half. I haven't done a lot of a lot of these live shows and i've been um getting my work done and i drew in the last month or so i drew four super pet books and i got three more two more to go and i'm working on drilling shot number two there's a lot of stuff going on a lot of stuff is in my head a lot of stuff is coming out of my head and onto the page and into my computer so it's cool man and um, I'm doing a lot of stuff for digital you could see on my page there's Webster the amazing spider monkey I've been doing that I'm doing a lot of books for digital I'm unleashing to the world the creations that are pouring out of my skull <laughs> the ideas that need to be here Ray Leonard says, thank you again. You're awesome, sir. Sweet for Scooby and Ray Leonard and Two Sheds. Hope you guys brought your coffee. Sweet for Haas. 
I have visions of New York City in my head because the New York Comic Con is supposed to come up in October, but of course it's got canceled in these trying times. But I miss it. I miss going to the city. I miss hanging out with my friends. I miss getting dollar pizza with us on the street. And Ray Leonard says, Patrick and Wolf Boy, still your, still your favorite. Oh, thanks, man. I just drew some Patrick sketches for for a fan because I um I do a lot of uh mailing. People buy stuff from my website, so I send them send them sketches when they order things. That's right, Chris. Two sheds. Chris Erickson. The vampire hours have settled in. Henceforth, the glasses, because it looks like I have pink eye. Because it's almost time for sleep, but I don't know when I'm going to sleep since I'm drinking coffee right now. The last few nights, or last few end of my days, I've been going to bed around noon. So I go to bed at noon and then wake up when I miss dinner. I wake up after dinner. So I don't know what's going on. Hopefully I can flip soon. The good thing about this is my wife encourages me, just go with it. Just don't fight it. Go with it. Go natural. And then just, I get my work done this way. So it's really cool. I get a lot, I get a lot done this way and I'm, I guess I'm blessed that I don't have to be anywhere ever <laughs> besides at my drawing table. Oh, yeah, dollar pizza. Oh, yeah, Haas. Swig for dollar pizza. There's a place in Chicago here. Um, I don't know if it's in the city. It's probably. But I have one near me. It's a place called Jets Pizza. Like the Jets family, I got a crush on you. Remember those kids? When we were in high school, when I was in high school, that song was famous. But Jets Pizza advertises every day during the White Sox games when I watch baseball. And I want to try their pizza. And their slogan is, we have to be good. We're good because we have to be or something like that. But it says it's the best Detroit tasting pizza Detroit style but I'm real curious maybe I'll get that this weekend but I don't know if they deliver I might have to go pick it up it's okay though I'll go pick it up and bring it home sweet for Haas sweet for Jets pizza this is the perfect temperature right now I hope you guys like my orange ensemble this is a new hat I just got it few days ago it came in the mail and fits me really good my big hair sticks out but I may be going to get a haircut really soon I know people like the fro the big fro I got under this but it's getting hard to maintain you know when you have longer hair big curly hair it requires more maintenance <laughs> so I might just go like do what the rock does and boom. well I'll cut it small but I won't be bald but I'll cut it small it just seems to be easier I'll do the brother bear his brother bear kind of buzzes his head swig for brother bear the music you're listening to the music you're hearing behind my voice is the music of my son Gordon Baltazar and you could follow the link and listen to it for free it's on SoundCloud and you could also follow the link to all this kind of stuff I have I have t-shirts which is cool I just made a I just made t-shirts that are called famous cartoonist says things on a t-shirt so you can click on the link and follow all the stuff that I all my catchphrases, you know? I got to make one that says, okay, bye-bye. But I do, uh, I got a lot of cool stuff. Swig for saying things.
every night while I draw, I've been watching baseball. I watch the White Sox. That's my team. Chicago guy, White Sox are my team. And if you're a White Sox fan, man, you've been treated to some exciting games. But the last two games they lost. And, I mean, you can't win them all. You win them, you lose them. They're not new. They're not. It's not a new thing that they lost. They lost a whole bunch in the beginning. But well, sometimes when you win too many in a row, because they kept saying, well, they they went for like, um, they won like 10 out of 12, 10 out of their last 12 games or something. And I saw this in the last two games. They're playing the other number one team. They're playing the Minnesota Twins. But what I seen was when you're a baseball team or anyone, even if it comes to, even when it comes to boxers, I see this a lot of times in boxing. The guy going in is un invincible. He's 36 and zero. And he goes in there to fight and he gets knocked out. He loses. And then he's never the same after that. Then he loses another one and another one. So, what I saw in their faces today and yesterday was defeat. And I hope, I'm praying to baby Jesus that they got to bounce back. Like the, the look of defeat, it's okay, but don't let that turn into another defeat and another one. But you have to give the Twins credit because the Twins were in first place all year until the Sox took them out until they replaced it. And so the White Sox were in first place by themselves for 24 hours, which was great. Now they share it with, I think, um, now they share it with Cleveland again, but but they played the best team and they got one out of three. So they lost two, but that's okay. And, um, but man, it's some good baseball. And, and um, I could see the like, all season, they made two errors, and in these last two games, they made like seven errors, six or six or seven errors, and then ended up costing them the game both times. So I have faith in these guys, man. But that's what I've been doing. That's probably why I haven't been doing many shows because I usually do a drawing show at night, but I'm watching the White Sox, and then <laughs> and then I watch them. I don't watch them live. I start watching them live, but I pre keep pausing so I can watch while I draw and stuff. And then I'll pause them and I'll go get a snack. I'll pause and go eat dinner, whatever it is. Pause, go get the mail. But so and sometimes it takes me about six hours to see a three-hour game because I just walk away and step away. But And when the game finishes for me, when I'm done watching, it's like one in the morning sometimes. And I want to go live on a show. But when I did that before... Nobody watches it. Nobody watches me at 2 in the morning. But they watch today, 7 in the morning. So <laughs> I should go live at 2 or 3 in the morning, see what happens. Swig for being alive. But yeah, man, the White Sox are cool. Raymond says, not tripping. Our White Sox are doing outstanding. Yeah, man. They keep your blood pressure high watching me. I know, man. It's, uh... I've never seen a team this good since 2005 White Sox. 2006 Sox were good until the last three weeks of the season, and then they lost it real fast. But um, even in a, when I was a kid in 1983, they were winning ugly. That was a good season, too. They were winning crazy. They were 100 games in, like, there were 30 games in first place or something. They were way ahead. And I'd never seen that before. That was an amazing year. And 2005 and this year, they're all, those are the three years that I witnessed that you have no doubt. Like when they go in there, you think they're going to win. It feels like they're going to win every time they play. So when they lose, I know it's, a, it's, like, it's like Ronda Rousey getting knocked out. She was supposed to win. She was supposed to break that girl's arm, but she got knocked out. 
So she came back, got knocked out again, and now we don't see her. She's gone. That's kind of what happens to champions. Once they lose, they're not used to that, and they don't like it. And it hurts their feelings. So hopefully, hopefully they bounce back. But the, the thing about them losing is they lost to the second best team in the league, in the division, which was Minnesota Twins, which the Minnesota Twins were picked to win the World Series before the season started. So we're going to face them again, though, in the playoffs. Because if the if it start they said if it started now the Sox would be in the playoffs, but we gotta wait like 24 more games or something, then the season's over. It's nuts, man. I like the high-powered, intense marathon style, hurry up and go kind of season. <laughs> All right, I can talk about baseball some more if you want. Swing for watching baseball. Swing for watching what you love to watch. Coffee's a perfect temperature right now. So good. That's a good song. That's probably my favorite one out of all of the songs. I don't know if this is a good or bad thing, but I started re-watching Breaking Bad once again. <laughs> I'm on, I'm on my 14th time watching this show, but it's been a while. It's almost been a year since I watched it, and I'm into it once again, and I, I get it to the point where I memorize the lines. I know what they're going to say, and I'm on season two right now, which is probably my favorite season. There's more things revealed in season two. Like more setup. I like the setup. I like the build up. Walter White gets his full goatee. He had a surgery. All that stuff. I'm oh, sorry. Spoilers. You see Gustavo Fring shows up. Saul Goodman shows up. All these things start happening. Sky there finds out things. So everything's cool. Joshua Hand is here. Not a Sox fan, but grew up watching them in the Cubs on WGN. I miss Carlton Fisk. Love this toughness. Yeah, man. That was a good team. I love Carlton Fisk, too. He was the one guy we would, we would wait after the games for the players. And when he'd come out of the gate, we'd all yell, Fisk, Fisk, Carlton Fisk, Fisk. And he would just look at us. He would put his glove and just look. But he wouldn't respond, he wouldn't say nothing, he wouldn't wave or anything. But but it was cool to see him, you know. I got a lot of White Sox autographs. I still got the ball cap. When they when they had that Campbell soup looking C on their hat, I still have that hat signed by Steve Lyons, Harold Baines, Ozzie Ginn. It's pretty cool. My cousin Gina's here. Hey Gina. So you're on break. Good to catch up, catch you. <laughs> I'm taking a break from uh, saving lives. I know you have an essential job. I'm not quite sure what it is. I think you, I'm going to say you drive a fire truck or something. <laughs> I don't know. But it's very essential. Because we learned that artists and sports guys and musicians are not essential. So we got to make it work. We got to do live shows. We put links in descriptions and get people to buy things so I could buy pizza. I could buy jet pizza for my kids. Well, no pressure or not. <laughs> Doing okay. I'm getting my deadlines done, which is awesome. Because a lot of my books I'm working on now are delayed until 2021, which is okay for me because it just extends each deadline for months. I get months added to the deadline, which is quite comfortable for me. Swig for comfortability. Comfortability? That's a word. Swig. Danny Wiswutski says, would love to see a Cubs and Sox World Series. Me too, man. Um, That's my prediction. I think it's going to happen. Because most people are saying now, um, there's a 
There's a theory out there that says everything started getting weird the day after the Cubs won the World Series. <laughs> they weren't supposed to win that year. Everything, everything that was looking like that day, Cubs were, they may not win. But all of a sudden, there was a rain delay. The skies open up. Baby Jesus shined some light, made it rain, gave everyone a rest, gave some power to Anthony Rizzo, and he came to the bat and changed history. And the Cubs won the World Series. But everything since then has been weird. And the rumor is, or the, the theory is, that the Cubs have to go to the World Series this year and they have to lose. And that will reset everything. Kind of like Marty McFly in Back to the Future it will reset the timeline. So I'm real curious. <laughs> I don't know if I believe in a theory. That's just a theory I heard. So people are saying, well, what team's going to beat them? And I always say the White Sox because the White Sox and the Cubs are the two teams that history has proven. They're the two teams that will never pick to win anything. But when they do, it's a big shock. People are like, wow, they were good this year. And then they win, and then you don't hear they don't win for another 80 years. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I think that that's a good prediction. White Sox and Cubs World Series 2020. 2020. 2020. Is it 2020 or 2020? I don't know. Gina says she used to be an EMT. I knew, I knew that about you. Now you're back in the food service. Cool. That's all right. You got to make some food. People need to eat. Josh Hansen, isn't that city crazy enough without that? Yeah, this city is crazy. There's lots of stuff happening here that is um, unforgivable. Don't mess around, man. Stay home. There's people out there causing problems. I don't know. People have their own causes, but the things that are happening are not good. The result of things. You can't even go anywhere because there's nowhere to go. When when you get there, there's nowhere to go. There's nowhere to eat. There's nowhere to park. There's just unless you bring unless you bring marshmallows or hot dogs, you could roast them because everything's on fire all the time. Every weekend, stuff's getting broken. So stuff. Stop doing that stuff. <laughs> you know, that's my social commentary for today. Stop messing up stuff. You know, I purposely don't listen to things just so I don't have to, uh, don't have to answer questions when people ask me stuff. I say, I don't know. Don't know. I don't know. I don't care. Just like, Stay away from my house. <laughs> Swig for words. The words I'm telling you are come out of my face, my head, my words, my thoughts. Swig. Drew and Jot number, yeah, number two. Drew and Jot number two was supposed to come out in November, December, January, but it's been pushed back because of these trying times these trying times I like to call them the do or do not times there's no try there's the do times or the do not times but these trying times these times of crisis these times of inner challenge these trying times have delayed all my books to I think summer of 2021 and I'm about halfway finished with it right now I wrote most of it I have the ending I'm missing like um pages 120 to 140 that's what I have to complete but from 140 to 200 or one page 160 to 200 that's what it is excuse me I used up air. I'm run out of air. <sighs> All right. From one page 160 to 200, I've written and I sketched out 
I think it's page 120 to 160 is where I have to figure that. But the middle of the story is cool because you just put any, I could put anything I want because I already have the ending. So Drew and Jot, book two will be out, I think, in the summer of 21. I believe so. I should be done with this before uh, winter. I should be done with this book by September or by uh, December, I'm hoping. Maybe by Thanksgiving. We'll see. But everything I'm working on has been pushed to 2021. Except for my Archimaniacs with DC Comics, that one comes out in December. December 24, and same with Gilbert. Gilbert Book 3 comes out in December or November. I think it might have been November 24, right before Thanksgiving. And I'm working on a Gilbert Book 4. So I'm doing a lot of stuff. I definitely have a lot of work still, and I definitely have a lot of deadlines, and I definitely have lots of all-nighters and vampire hours ahead of me where I try to flip over, but it's difficult. The only thing that makes me flip over is when I have to be somewhere at 9 a.m. in the morning and I need sleep. But I don't have that right now. <laughs> I don't have to be anywhere. <laughs> so it's weird. I have to be somewhere Friday like 4 o'clock or something. But I should be awake. If not, I will just set my alarm and wake up. That's all it is. So simple. Swig. For keeping your life simple. I used to say, I still say, you could judge how complicated and difficult your life is about how many keys you have on your key ring, about how many keys you carry around with you. For years and years, all I had was my car key and my apartment key and a key for my lock on my bike. Three. <laughs> So, if you can get your keys down to a minimum, you're doing all right. When you have keys on your key ring, they're like, I don't know what this key's for. It's time to eliminate some things. Does it make sense? <laughs> Just saying stuff. I haven't been on for a while, but it feels good to see you guys. What else we got? <laughs> Um, Breaking Bad, drawing comics, drinking coffee, ordering pizza. I haven't been to Harold's in a little while. Last time I went, it took too long to get my food. It took a long time. So, like, I'm going to give them a break. Let them figure out what they're doing. Andrew Clark is here. How you doing, Andrew? Andrew wants to know what I'm watching on TV. Um, I watch baseball every day. That's about all I watch. You know what? I watched, um, I've been watching Adam Sandler movies <laughs> on the Netflix. And he's, um, Adam Sandler's always married to Jennifer Aniston on these shows, in these movies. So they're okay. I can't remember what they're about, though. He gets her mad, then they make up at the end, and you realize he really loves her. Does it? That's every movie. Yeah. Andrew Clark wants to know if I have new toys. The last one I bought, I bought one of those Yodas. One of those little uh, child. I bought one of those Mandalorian guys. He's on my shelf way over there. over there on the shelf. I can't get him too conveniently. But my next show, my 
famous cartoonist reveals things, I'm going to reveal some photographs that the, the, the gentleman named Kim Simmons is the photographer for the Star Wars toys that we played with as kids. And he took pictures of all of the artwork for the boxes. So I have some photographs I bought from him. So I'm going to reveal them on the next famous cartoonist reveals things for you. My cousin Trees is here. What's up, Shug? Yeah, I'm early today, but I'm still awake. I didn't wake up early. I woke up about 15 hours ago, and I'm just still awake. <laughs> I was about to finish work and then go eat breakfast and go to sleep. But then instead, I brewed some coffee. <laughs> so I'm drinking more coffee and I'm here to talk to the masses. Trees likes the hat. Thanks, Suge. It's new. I just got it about a few days ago. It came in the mail. And um, But thank you. I forget where I buy stuff. A lot of times I... I buy one thing. I buy... um. I buy one thing online, and then I'll get all these ads on Facebook or on my sidebar of my email, and it'll all be hats. So I'll go to the hats, and if there's a if there's a size chart in the hat, then I could buy it online. Because if I just base a hat on one size fits all, it usually never fits my head. Or if I do an extra large. It may not be large enough, but if I get a hat that says the actual hat size, it'll fit. Right now, it's squeezed on my head only because I have all this beautiful hair. Look at it off. It's coming out. I have all this hair. That's, I'm going to cut it off. I'm going to get through because I can't wear all my hats right now. This one fits with the hair. But... I miss wearing my hats. Just told me to go to bed. I'm going to be sick tomorrow. That's right. <laughs> my mom used to say it at all the time. You act up, you stay up all night, you're going to be sick tomorrow. I showed her. I stay up all night, every night. I sleep all kinds of weird hours of the day. I think I slept all afternoon. Swig. Swig for sleeping when you can. I know you guys are doing a lot of Zoom calls this morning. My cousin Treese, you're um my cousin Treese is a school nurse. So she's making kids, making sure your kids get their shots. She puts band-aids on them. And uh gets a wet towel for their headaches. That's right. Ever since prom, it's ever since prom, it's been a party. It's been a party for 40 years now. Teresa's going to work. I know everybody's getting ready right now. Anyone who starts at eight o'clock, I'm gonna make you late for your job. Anyone who's in the East Coast is already working. The people on the West Coast are just waking up. Just got a notification. A famous cartoonist in the morning. Is why you could get um there's notifications on her somewhere. I don't know how to do it. In case you love what you're hearing, <laughs> you could you could click and get notified anytime you guys want to hear me say stuff. Because if, it's called famous cartoonist says things in the morning, not famous cartoonist tells you the truth or brings you the news it's just I say things usually um, usually I say well everything I say is the truth but it's my truth <laughs> yeah <laughs> Andrew Clark said the Mandalorian season 2 starts October 30th I saw that and you know what like I see all these links pop up but that was the title of the link October 30th, Mandalorian begins. And I'm like, I don't need to click on a link now. That's what I wanted to find out. But I'm really looking forward to that. I'm really looking forward to that Mandalorian Season 2. There's all kinds of rumors. 
I think it's been confirmed that Boba Fett's in it. And Ahsoka Tano, played by the lovely Rosario Dawson. And the rumor I'm hearing is Luke Skywalker is going to be in there. I'm not sure if that's just internet crazy or if it's real. But the other rumor I'm hearing is we're going to see a planet of those Yoda creatures. Yoda species. More Yodas are going to show up. All of that stuff sounds awesome. I hope it works. Squeak for making good Star Wars. Just make good Star Wars. You need to capture the world. Capture the Star Wars world, the universe that's enthralled <laughs> within the characters' lives. Because the trees works two minutes away. That's good. That's a, just a little longer than what I have to do. I walk 13 steps down my stairs. Well, two sets of 13. 13 to the kitchen, coffee, and then 13 here. But then it's probably another 13 to my chair. 13, 13, 13. So you see over there I have... <laughs> I just noticed you can see maracas. I got some maracas over there. Maybe I'll have some music next time. I'm trying to convince my sons or somebody to come on and sit next to me. Because I could probably fit someone right here. So I could fit someone real tiny. I could fit a person here. See my cup? I could fit someone here and we could do a... I could have a guest on my show. And maybe I'll have my wife come with me. She'll just cover her face. No, oh, I don't want to be on there. You know, maybe. I can have my cousin Trees come over. That'll be cool. We'll do a live show together. Sweet for Trees. Sweet for the Mandalorian. It's all true. Tree says 100. Is that 100 percent? Are those glasses? Yeah. I don't know if I should go to bed. <laughs> or if I should continue to draw things. Man, I've been doing a lot of stuff. I wonder if other comic book artists work on as much stuff. You know? I know Ray Leonard's doing good with Solo. And I wonder if how many how many people um how many artists draw as much stuff? Because every weekend I've been every weekend I've been going into my sketchbooks and transferring all my stories into all my stories into uh, uh, into the computer so I could put them out digitally. And I want to get a bunch of books done before I unload them digital so I could people could see how busy it is, you know. I could bomb bomb the internet with all my characters. It'll happen. Trees tell me to go to bed. I might have to. I had um I just had a little bit of a breakfast before I came down. So I feel good. But it might be winding down. You never know. Andrew Clark says, yes, I also heard Ezra and Sabine from Rebels maybe. Wow. Rebels characters in the Mandalorian. Yeah, that that makes sense because the Dark Saber is now in in this Mandalorian world. Gustavo Fring has the Dark Saber, so that would be cool to see. And I'm still watching uh, Clone Wars. I haven't been able to watch as much because I'm watching it with the boys, with my boys. So. I don't have a lot of time to sit up there and watch it lately. But if it's something I watch on the computer while I work, I could get through it. But I want to watch with the boys. 
Maybe I'll watch it and not tell him. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if I want to do that. But it's cool. But when I watch it, I don't want to watch. I don't want to watch Clone Wars while I work because I like looking at it. I like to see the visuals and the animation, and it looks really cool. But Mandalorian's going to be cool, and it's written like. Um, it's written, it's written for Star Wars fans who don't really... You don't have to follow anything else but Mandalorian. All you have to know is like all of this is taking place in the Star Wars universe. And what time period? You're like, It's after the Emperor was destroyed. Or was he? Emperor. Those sequels, man, they brought him back. And it's after Vader. Vader turned into a ghost. But... The news lately with Star Wars is all the actors are upset. The actors are upset with the sequels, which is kind of weird. I guess now that they're not making any more movies with those actors, now they're speaking up and they're angry. And um, I think the whole Star Wars fandom is kind of disappointed with the sequels. They're okay, but they could have been way better. There's a lot they could have done. There's a lot they should have done. But I think the Mandalorian is doing it. And anything else they're making. They're going to make Obi-Wan. There's a lot of rumors of Obi-Wan floating around with Anakin Skywalker going to be in there. And um, Darth Vader appearances and maybe Darth Maul. All kinds of stuff. And I heard a rumor that they're making the sequel to the Solo movie. But it's going to be on Disney Plus as a miniseries. And that would be cool too, man. I hope that I hope that happens. If that happens, I'll be very happy. Just make good Star Wars. Just make good stars forever and ever. That's all they need to do. You know? That's it. It's not hard. You have to make a good movie and show people before you release it to the public and have people tell you what they think. And then adjust it to make it better. So what do you think? Well, I think you should do this. You should add Vader. Yeah, yeah, that's good. It's a good idea. Maybe Ray should have a yellow lightsaber and you should go on a uh, own adventure. New villains. Yeah, yeah. Build upon. Build upon the the mythology, the storyline. Build it. Build it. Keep going forward. There's no more explaining. You don't have to explain anything anymore. Just go for it. Like the Mandalorian. We don't know anything about this guy. And it's cool that when he was a kid, he got attacked by the droids. I guess they killed his mom and dad and stuff. It's good stuff. Mandalorian is just cool. I like it all. You guys like this outfit? I have like a hand Solo vest. Okay. Should I open it up a little bit? I have like a hand solo vest, and um, it's kind of cool. I bought it for conventions, but I only wore it to C2E2, and then the conventions were all canceled. <laughs> but it's a cool vest. It's like, you know, feels like Star Warsy. Maybe I'll put a patch on it or something. Should I put a patch on there? I'll leave it plain. <laughs> Getting dry. Need a swig. A swig for hand solo vest. I need a white shirt underneath so I could pilot the Millennium Falcon. My old van, I used to call my van the Falcon because it was a white white van. And <coughs> I got that name because my wife says, um, she told me I had to meet her somewhere. And I told her, I'll pick you up in the Falcon in five minutes. And she went, what? <laughs> but now we have a Nissan. Is it Nissan? Yeah, Nissan Quest. And my kid says to me, well, the last, the last man was called the Falcon. What's the new one? And I said, it's the Razor Quest. Like the Mandalorians, the Razor Crest. We have the Razor Quest. Or just a razor. I'm gonna pick you up in the razor.
It's all true. Well, hopefully, hopefully everyone's getting to work on time, doing your thing. And hopefully you like what I've said today. I'm just saying stuff. I'm spewing words. Words of wisdom. Famous cartoonist says things in the morning. A swig for anyone who's listening. Swig for family. Swig for loved ones. Swig for friends. Swing, swing for co-workers who are nice to you. Sweet. Trees needs a new car. Yeah, that's why we had to get the Razor Quest. Because the Falcon died. Got shot down by TIE Fighters. And um, it wouldn't go anymore. <laughs> it got Minox for chewing on the power cables. And it died. And it was too expensive to fix it. And to fix it would cost just as much as buying a new car. And that's what happened. But you got to retire sometimes and you know, bless him, do all that stuff. Pour one out for him and get a new one. But the cool thing is, like, when um, we had to get rid of the old car and the kids were. Uh, well, they said, is that it? We just get rid of it? How are we going to remember it? So I took all of the all of the caps off of the tires and put them on their bikes because the bikes didn't have caps. So their bikes have all the caps from our old van, which is kind of funny. She said the water pump exploded. Yeah, that's uh, it's terrible. Car stuff, man, it's awful. That's pretty good in these trying times. We don't get in the car as often as we used to. So it's kind of saving on maintenance at, at this juncture in these trying times. Save on gas. <laughs> well, you should be good. Two minutes to work means you could probably walk. You don't need a car, trees, just walk. We're from Chicago. I didn't have a car till I was like 23 years old, 25, whatever it was. I used to ride my bike everywhere. Still do. Well, when I have to. I don't leave the house, though. I've been home since about 2003. Once in a while, I go out to get the mail, go to Harold's. That's about it. Wayne is here. Swig for the working man. Swig for Wayne. Oh, yeah, it's a good song. I was just feeling the groove right there. Yeah, trees, you gotta ride your bike. I, um, there's a lot of trails behind my house and around my house. It's pretty cool. But I, I don't ride as much. I rode a few times. But well, mostly we use the trails for walking or running. I'm trying to get back into running. I used to run two miles a day around probably around 10 years ago maybe more when the kids were real little I just got to get back into it because now I gotta do things because I'm old now but I've been walking treadmilling got to go outside more got to eat less it's just what you got to do it's what you got to do that's a word sweat sweat ya <laughs> so what you gotta do Wayne said it's all about the chicken yeah it is man that's my favorite food I think chicken wings all kinds of chicken wings hot wings Harold's chicken I like the grocery store the jewel bucket of wings I like all the wings just chicken tastes good chicken tenders nuggets I like the chicken Chicken. Chicken or chicken? Yeah, man, you gotta. You gotta do stuff. I 
contemplate. Should I work some more or go to bed? <laughs> maybe, maybe I'll just go to bed for like four hours, and so I could be tired later again. That could be work. Because last night I woke up twice, and it was still Wednesday. And technically, right now for me, it's Wednesday night. And I will wake up, and it'll be Thursday, even though it's Thursday now. And that's the weirdest part is when you go to sleep on the same day and you wake up and it's still that day. And that's how I squeeze out these days. So everyone else in the planet, it's uh, it's Thursday. My wife, it's Thursday. The kids have school today, Thursday. And to me, it's not Thursday for another eight hours from now. Thursday will begin. We want to know, did you meet your deadlines? Yeah, man, I'm meeting them. I was saying earlier, like, a lot of my book deadlines have been pushed back because a lot of my stuff's not coming out until 2021. So I actually have extra time. But I'm working on super pet books now. And, man, am I, I'm chugging along on those. I'm doing really good with those. The deadlines are really quick because I could do... When it comes to children's books, if that's all I have to do, I could probably do a book a week because I it's only like um, 16 drawings or 16 pieces of art, really. It's um, and the art on the children's books are double page spreads. So there's not a lot of, um, it's not like a comic where you're drawing five, five scenes on every page pretty much. Or a children's book, I could, draw a big page and it's a double page spread and it takes care of two pages so i really enjoy that and i draw i draw um it takes me a day if i really push i could do a whole book in a day draw it in a day send it in and then get the comments and then ink it and color it in another i draw in a day usually ink it in a day or day and a half and then takes about two days of color so i can do a whole thing in a week 16 page 16 spreads in a week but unfortunately that's well fortunately and unfortunately i have more than just that book to do so i have a lot of stuff i'm juggling but when i have all these crazy deadlines it's kind of like i explained it before like it's kind of like juggling but i'm juggling oranges you know juggling some oranges and throw, someone throws me an apple. It's the same size, but it's a little different. But then all of a sudden, someone throws me a watermelon. <laughs> now I'm juggling watermelon, apples, oranges. Then someone throws me a bowling ball. You know, so that's what's happening. So right now, currently, I got rid of the bowling ball, bowling ball and I got rid of the watermelon. So I'm juggling apples and oranges right now, which are similar in size and weight. But, so it's easier, my schedule's easier to maintain because I'm not wearing myself too thin. Um, but when I start drawing, I go and plow through the night and that's where I reset and turn into a vampire because I'm ignoring the clock. But I'm having fun getting my work done, but that's what happens at the end of the night. I realize that like right now it's eight o'clock in the morning and I didn't go to bed yet. I'm still awake. It's true. Apples and oranges, juggling. And pizza. Someone throws you a pizza to juggle. That's hard to do. Wayne's favorite food is pizza. I love pizza, man. Meeting and exceeding meeting and exceeding deadlines. Yeah, the cool thing about right now is um the cool thing about now is now that the books have been delayed a bit because of these trying times. These trying times have delayed some of my books. Not all of them, some of them, which also adds to deadlines. So I got, in some cases, I got like three extra months added to my deadline, which um, I don't want to relax when that happens. So I keep going, I keep going, I keep, I keep drawing with the same intensity and the same speed, same pace, so I could finish, hopefully, I could finish and still have two months before it's due. 
and then I could relax a little bit, you know. I like to relax a little bit. And I haven't ever had that time to relax a little bit probably in the last five, six years. I haven't had a time off. So um, the only time I had off, one time I went to San Diego Con in July, and I didn't have any work. But then all of a sudden in August, all my products got approved, and I'm still working on those right now. And I'm in the middle of a lot of them, like Drew and Jot number two. I'll have number three done and Gilbert number four. I start Gilbert number four in October. So I'm really not gonna have <laughs> really not gonna have any more time off, but my schedule will be easier and lighter. That's what I'm looking forward to. I'm looking forward to it being a little bit lighter. Which it will. But I don't mind. I'm gonna draw anyway. Even if even if I didn't have deadlines for other publishers, I'd still be drawing my own comics. Which I still squeeze them in anyway. That's what I do on weekends. Hopefully this weekend I'll be able to paint. That'll be fun. But I don't know if I'll get there. Um, I have to go buy some paint because I ran out. I need colors like this guy's eyeball. The yellow that you see. I don't have yellow. And I don't have white. I need those colors. Wayne says, it gets really scary when you have to juggle a chainsaw. Yeah. But sometimes... Apples, oranges, watermelon, chainsaw. You could get lucky and a chainsaw could cut the watermelon in half, but then it gets messy. You're trying to juggle. Yeah, I try not to juggle chainsaws, but once in a while, someone will throw one my way and I'll have to juggle it and get rid of it as soon as I can. <laughs> Kevin Bixby's here, my friend. Oh, yeah, famous cartoonist. He said, did I miss the Herald's chat? Um... We didn't discuss Harold's, but Harold's was definitely mentioned. That I miss it, I need chicken. And I said that Harold's was, uh, their service has changed. <laughs> Last time we went, we spent two hours waiting for our chicken. Seemed like it, maybe 40 minutes, I don't know. But they will rejoice once again. Like I said, these trying times have caused much change. In the way we do things in our culture. The way we do things, everyday lifestyle, has changed because of these trying, challenging, trying times. There is do or do not. There's no try. Listen to Yoda. It's all about the tips. Yeah, you got to tip them. Go to Harold's, give them a tip. And you have to let them see and you have to say, this is for you. Put it in that jar. But uh, I haven't had cash in months. I haven't had cash in months. I don't know how to get cash. Every time we, uh, every time we get paid some way, it's either a direct deposit or a check. And I haven't had cash forever. And even when I go pay for stuff, I just use the card or whatever. So it's real different. Things are different, these trying times. Tree says, these trying times need to exit stage left. Right. A lot of people are trying to say now that these trying times are a hoax. But I don't know if that's true. And I've heard... I don't know if it's true or just an internet rumor. Our baseball legend, Tom Seaver, I know he, he passed yesterday, which was pour one out for Tom Seaver. Swig for Tom Seaver. Hall of Famer, former White Sox player, was on the Mets, Red Sox. Was he on the Reds too? White Sox. But he was great. I love watching him. But I've heard that he died from complications with this new trying times disease that's going around. I heard that. I'm not sure if it's true. Hopefully he um he went natural. I don't know if he was sick. I'm not sure what happened, but Tom Seaver will be missed. He's hanging out now with uh the other baseball greats. 
Kevin Bixby. Kevin Bixby loves my new shirts. Thanks, man. Famous cartoon that says things t-shirts. You could get my sayings. You're a good man, sir. You could get oh yeah, man. Swig for the working man. Swig for the working woman. And you could get um welcome to the all yeah podcast. I like pink very much, Lois. You could get all of those sayings on t-shirts now. Wayne says these trying times are exiting stage left, so Snagglepuss will exit will exit stage right. So they'll go left and right. There'll be no one there. No one left standing but the famous cartoonists and the masses, the people. <laughs> you guys are the masses. As I say mass, let us pray. It's true. Teresa says, just like the e-flu, if you have underlying conditions, you're at risk. Right. You can get anything and be at risk. I, mean, I had a little cut on my leg one time, and I went to the hospital for three days. I had a paper cut on my ankle. And I went into the hospital. I caught a uh, bacterial, a bacteria that wanted to kill me. Almost died. And so I was at risk. Now, for the rest of my life, they told me that could happen again. So I got to be careful. I wear, I wear pants now. <laughs> I rarely wear shorts anymore. You know, it's weird. I wear long pants now because I don't want to go back to the hospital. Sweet for staying healthy. I wonder if they say anything about staying up all night in these trying times. Kevin Bixby's off to a meeting. Let's wrap soon. Yeah, man. We'll discuss comic books, drawings, characters. You have success today, Kevin Bixby. You go do things. Perhaps there will be Harold's Chicken in our future. This is some good music to get you going. Gordon Balthazar on SoundCloud. My guy's working too. I'm very proud of him. He became a working man. People are working. My, my son calls it the grind. He said, Daddy, what you're doing is called the grind. <laughs> He's like, I hope so, man. It's a deadline grind. I need a lot of stuff. I have pages open right now because I have to do a little bit of corrections on them. And um, I don't want to forget. So I think before I go to bed, I'm going to do that. And then go to bed. That might happen. Wayne wants to know any new custom Migos. Um, no, I have some planned, but I haven't had time to make them yet. But I'm talking to. I'm gonna say it. I'm gonna say it right now. Yeah, I'll say it. I could do it. I'm talking to a toy guy. It's going to happen. Toys. I'm thinking toys. But I just don't know want of details or who it's with because um, we got to set that up though. But I'm talking toys and the company I'm working on was real excited. We're all excited. We're all in, as they say. We're going to do it. So, this weekend is, like on the weekends now, I've been doing a lot of my own characters, my own creations, in preparation for this stuff. So, 
when I want to do my own things like toys and t-shirts and all this stuff, I have to only do it on the weekends because if I do it during the week, then something I'm working on that has a deadline will get delayed. So that's why I haven't done any painting shows because I've been doing other stuff. I've been trying to, I've been trying to uh, take advantage of the two hours or the two days on the weekend. So this weekend, I'm designing some turnarounds, character turnarounds for toys. More, more about that later because we're going to do something that's going to be fun. Hopefully that will work out. I think it will because the technology these days is very different than it was 20 years ago or so. Yeah, it's going to happen. Danny was with Mooski. My son was. He said your son was a Mick employee. Yeah. Um, my son likes it. He's having a good time. And um, I know I worked at White Castle when I was 17. And it got to the point where I didn't want to go to work. I knew it wasn't for me. I didn't like it. And um, I ended up begging my parents to, if I could quit, can I go quit today? And then when I went to the, I went to go to work to quit and talk to my boss, and I was crying. <laughs> I started crying because I was quitting. I told her I was sorry, and she said it was okay. And then uh, she even said, if you change your mind, come on back. But I couldn't take it no more. And once I quit, went home, I was very happy. But then I didn't have a job. I, and that started the, it just started me job hopping for the next 42 jobs. And the next years and years went by. So I just knew, and I told my son that if you want to own a McDonald's, you're in the perfect place. But if you don't like it, or that what you'll find out is if you like the job or not. If you don't like it, you'll know. If you do like it, you'll know that too. And if you want to own a McDonald's, you're in a perfect place. If that's your career goal, you're there. You can do it. But if you don't want to own a McDonald's, you're going to think about, this is going to help you decide what you want to do. So that's good. That's the advantage of working a lot of different jobs. Wayne said he worked at KFC in high school. That's cool. I have a friend who worked at KFC, and I think he still does. And I call him Chicken Boy. <laughs> Maybe he'll work at Harold's. You never know. You guys are awesome. Swig for fast food workers. Because without them, the masses would not eat. Fast food workers feed the masses. Me, you, everyone. We all need to eat. And I like eating fast food. It feels good. It's delicious. It gets the job done. And it's really good for when you're having parties. I guess. <laughs> I'm almost done with the swigging. You guys are awesome. I'm going to finish these pages. I just got to add. I'm drawing Drew and Jot. And there's a scene in the book where Andrew's little sister, Patsy, splashes purple paint on everything. And I forgot to add the purple paint on the cover of uh, Foz's sketchbook. That's all I have to do. But I'm going to get going. I want to thank you guys for hanging out with me today. And being with her and let me just talk about whatever. I'm just, <laughs> I'm just saying a lot of weird stuff. But you guys are awesome. And um, it's a good start to your day. It's the end of my day. 
I will do this again one time, sometime, I don't know when. Because my hours have been so weird and unpredictable that uh, I don't know when I'm going to do this again. I always try to I always think about it every day, but it never happens. Maybe I'll do some drawing, some reveals. When I wake up, it will be Thursday. It's Thursday right now, I know. But it doesn't feel like it. So be nice to each other. No fighting, no crying. Be nice to each other. And wake up every day. And do the things that make you happy. Choose happiness. If it hurts, don't do it anymore. Stop doing that. Stop doing the things that hurt you. If your shoes are too tight and they hurt your feet, you know, get new shoes. Buy new shoes. I need to buy some new running shoes because my shoes hurt currently. They're not good. I wore them out. I popped those Nike cushions that are in there. But no fighting, no crying. Be nice to each other. Wake up and do things that make you happy. And uh, there's joy to be found. It's out there. There's joy. There's happiness. There's ways to be positive. You guys be awesome. I will do this again and see you next time. Okay, bye-bye.